the following way that the it's uh, this amount of power of this given fixed number c where this exponent is the largest integer which satisfies that x should be in this, m, this integer amount of power of the given prime. So in fact, this is equivalent to saying that the, this is when this p to the m's power actually divides this idea generated by our given any x, which is non-zero for x for any x non-zero in k. The valuation defined in this way is an uh, yeah. that there is a non-Archimedean valuation. And in fact, those are the all the possible valuations for uh, number fields. And usually the second one is called the uh, instead of calling it a non-Archimedean valuation, this one is usually given for uh, choosing one prime. So this one is usually called a periodic valuation. And uh, in fact, just some, the property from the property of the static domain, actually one can just get this tiny effect that this one is just a product of all of these numbers. That actually the value, the, the value of this <coughs> non-Archimedean valuation, that this one, as we chose it to be this one, it is simply quite related to the norm of this. If you take a norm, then each of these vector becomes a one over the valuation. So. And uh, and as we are now seeing those valuations up to equivalence, we think of an equivalence class of those valuations. Of valuations. is called a place or a prime. <coughs> Why it is called prime is quite clear because we are only dealing with the, we are mostly dealing with the number field and the most of the valuation is just chosen to be this, <coughs> chosen to be obtained from this prime and the, and that's why actually this one is also became, sometimes this one is also called the infinite prime or uh, that one is usually called the infinite place. So the, if k is a number field usually, those are Archimedean valuations. They are usually called the uh, infinite places. And uh, you see that there are this many of those infinite places or Archimedean places. And for the non-Archimedean non ones, they are equivalence class of them are usually called the finite places because we're like a, or a finite prime then it makes more sense but uh, now we kind of prefer those words of a place so and there are only finitely many Archimedean variations while there Definitely infinitely many non-Archimedean valuations in the number field.
So, oops. Now, hmm. Before we move on to the completion, let me just introduce this. Uh, So Ray class group, as I define the class group, let me just introduce this, that this one will be needed in the, somewhere in the proofs, but the, so. This is like uh, some variation of the, variation of the, the, the ideal class group, actually. It just gives us more information about the atmosphere and the ramification thing. And uh, we first define a modulus, which is a formal product, actually, of a prime ideals. And this P is over all of finite and infinite primes. And with uh, this multiplicity, this one is, should be always zero if uh, our prime is a complex infinite prime which means that the embedding, which gives us a valuation, should be not be contained in a real numbers. And uh, it is either 0 or 1. Actually, this is chosen arbitrarily. It depends on, it's just your choice, depends on the situation. And uh, it is either 0 or 1 if our prime is again an infinite prime, but it is real one. And it is some another positive integer or zero otherwise. So for finite primes, there is no limitation. But the, the one restriction is that there should be only finitely many of these primes which has this multiplicity other than zero. So and this one should be. In fact, this one should be zero for almost all primes. And then, Then now we should define uh, no, actually, and I should mention this again that this one can be represented by the product of these two. That this is a collection of all the products of a finite places, and let's say that this one is a collection of infinite primes, so it should be a real infinite primes. So and they are the products of all of these real infinite primes. And why this is formal is that this one is actually well defined, but this one is very abstract. So this one should be defined formally. And then uh, then now for any you need element in a field which is non-zero element in here. Then we say that alpha is formally congruent to one modulo this modulus if alpha is in a oh and I think I forgot 
one definition that this is a valuation ring. of our k with respect to this valuation v of p things and v of p means that this valuation is determined by this prime p. The alpha is in this local ring which is definitely contained in definitely contained in this thing. And uh, this is congruent to one modulo this prime, modulo this ring. For all prime p with the multiplicity bigger than zero. And this one should be greater than zero if this sigma is a real embedding. And say that this is corresponding to the infinite prime P of M whose multiplicity is non-zero, which is one. This is the only possibility. And then, then we think of a, a collection of the elements in K star which is formally congruent to one modulo this modulus. And this one forms a abelian group under those multiplications for sure. And now we define the subgroup of an ideal group, which is a collection of fractional ideals. in K, which is relatively prime to any prime which divides our modulus in a finite place. So this is only a condition for those finite primes, just note that. And this one is definitely a subgroup of a original ideal group. So one can define the collection of some principal ideal with, which de is dependent of this modulus, that this is a collection of those principal ideals, principal fractional ideals where those generators all belong to that subgroup of the unit group. And then, the definition of a rate class group is a quotient of these two, yes, for sure. And this one depends on those modulus. So if modulo M is defined to be the quotient of these two groups. And And this one seems to have a, like a close relation with the original ideal class group that in fact if this M is one then we obtain an original ideal class group. And so there is a relation between the, those 
Uh, okay, so there's a relation between the class number and the order of this ray class group. If I define this order of this one to be H of M, then if I define just uh, some generalization of all the rest phi function, which used to give us a number of those ele like elements, which is relatively prime to P, that this is now the ideal in now this is now the group in our sense. It's a quotient of these two and the collection of the units in here. So this is a generalized Euler function. You see that definitely in the original case, the norm of the, the just the order of this one gives us the original Euler five value, and then the the order of rate class group is actually given by this equation. Well, this is not the commonly used notation, I think. But, uh, so this is a product of those prime ideals. So just just give us a give a multiply see multiplicativity for this generalized Euler function, then one can get this value and uh, you get two to the this amount over so actually one has some concrete relation in between these two and uh, and where the only thing not defined is this value this is the number of the real places in our modulus. Definitely, which is non zero wave means. So, uh, takes a long time. So now I can move on to the completion, but uh, I'm not sure if it's a good time to move on to this one. So maybe I should continue. Yeah, it's exactly one for you. So let me just continue this on the afternoon session. <laughs> 